Hey everybody, how's it going? Today we're going to be going over and showing you how to install the Dimco Diode Wiring Kit here on a 2015 GMC Sierra 2500. So this is what our Diode Wiring Kit is going to look like installed. As you can see here, we don't have any wires running over our vehicle here or any additional lights. The Diode Kit is actually going to use the same factory bulbs here as well as the same factory taillights. Therefore, everything is integrated into one, the seamless package that we have from the factory. Now, there are a couple different tail light wiring systems on the market. We mentioned the ones that have the magnetic base. They sit on top of the body somewhere, and we obviously have to droop some wires down our truck. Definitely not ideal. There's also other kits that require drilling into the tail lights. We're not gonna have to worry about either of those things with our diodes here, because again, we're gonna be using the factory bulbs and the factory tail lights. So what our diode wiring kit is gonna do, it's gonna be designed for when we're dinghy towing our vehicle. And simply put, it's gonna transfer these signals from our motorhome to our towed vehicle. That way we can let others around us know what's going on and what signals we're gonna be making. It'll transfer the most basic signals, such as the stop and turn signals, as well as the running light circuit. So keep in mind, we do have to splice into a few of the factory wires in order to get this kit installed. However, because of the integrated diodes, we don't have to worry about any issues with the motorhome transpiring over and affecting our vehicle's lights. Everything is gonna be isolated due to the diodes, preventing the back feed of electricity. So one of the other reasons I really like this kit is gonna be in regards to the umbilical, which is simply the part that bridges the motorhome to the towed vehicle. So the reason I like this is, is the durability of our umbilical. It also has a coil design. So with this coil design, it's gonna help keep things nice and tight to the bottom of our tow bar. Therefore, we don't have to worry about it dragging the ground and becoming damaged. Furthermore, it's also a seven-way to six-way adapter. So most of the time, you really only need a four-way to transmit the actual signals, but there are certain cases where you may wanna run a charge line through the umbilical cord, and this option allows for that. It'll simply plug into the seven-way we have on our motorhome, and then we'll wire up a six-way to the diodes on the towed vehicle, and then everything is plug and play from there. So in regards to installation, this one is not bad at all. It really shouldn't take you that much time or effort to do. Everything's pretty straightforward. We're gonna mount a trailer connector up at the front of the vehicle. We're gonna run a wire from the front of the vehicle to the rear, and then we need to make a couple splices into the factory taillight circuit, but that's pretty much it. Let's go ahead and walk you through that process now. So to start our installation here, we want to find a good place to go ahead and mount our trailer connector. So for our particular base plate kit here, it actually came with an additional trailer connector bracket. A lot of the base plate kits do have this. We're using the Dimco one. So if this is the one you're going to be using, you're going to have this bracket. We can show you exactly how to install it. If you have a different base plate kit with a different uh, trailer connector bracket, these next couple steps could vary a little bit, but most of them are fairly similar, so you should be able to use this to help you out. So what we did for our trailer connector bracket, for the Demco one, there's gonna be two holes on each side. We went ahead and just cut off the rear holes to flush up the bracket, and then we mounted it directly to the bottom, sort of the flange to the license plate into this uh, plastic air dam. So we just ran two self-tapping screws up through those holes and then into a metal support underneath the bumper there. You can see it's nice and solid. But once we have that mounted, we're gonna go ahead and cut off the four-way that comes on our umbilical cord, and then we're gonna route that to the rear of the vehicle. So this doesn't come in your kit, but you can pick some up separately. We just have some wire loom here that we placed over this first couple feet of the wire here just to help protect it in the engine bay. But we have it ran over here and then up along over the top of the frame. So depending on what braking system you're using, some of them require you to splice into the taillight wiring circuits. If that's the case, then you're probably gonna wanna run the taillight wires up into the engine bay, make a loop up there, tie it off, and then bring it back down. If your braking system doesn't require this, you don't have to worry about that. But right about here is where we came out when we made our loop, and then we're actually gonna go into the frame. We can show you that on the other side here. And then we basically just ran the wire from this point in the frame all the way to the other end. So here you can see our wire entering the frame. We're directly above our sway bar here. So there's gonna be several of these little access points throughout the frame. Basically, you're gonna to have to use these to get the wire all the way back to the rear. You're not just gonna be able to push it through there all the way back. You'll have to take a piece of a little bit sturdier material, such as an airline tubing, 
You'll tie one into your wire and then you'll push the airline tubing down the frame until you can get it to come out one of the access holes and you'll simply just repeat that same process all the way down. So now we're over here at the rear of our truck. You can see that we have the remaining of our bonded four pole hanging down. So there's gonna be a large circular access hole directly behind the bumper above the leaf springs on the outside of the frame rail and that's where we pulled our wire out. So now what we're gonna do next is we're gonna remove our tail lights and then we can fish our wire up in the tail light housing pocket. So we're gonna start first by removing the driver side tail light. We're gonna need a 15 millimeter Torx bit and we're gonna have two Torx screws here. We're gonna take those both out now. And once we have both of those screws out, we should be able to pull the tail light out and away from the vehicle. Just like that. So now that we have the tail light pulled back and away, what we're gonna do is we're gonna remove each of these bulbs here. We'll just simply turn those. There's a little diagram here that shows you which way to turn it to remove it, and then just pull it straight out. We have one more. And now we'll go ahead and set this aside, and we can repeat this same process on the other side now, or we can do it a little bit later when we route our wire over there. So now all I did was I went underneath and I grabbed that bonded four pole, and it's super easy. You got a straight shot up into a nice open pocket here that we can use to run our wires up behind the tail light here. And what I'll do next is I'm gonna take a zip tie, I'm gonna tie it to our wiring harness here so I don't have to worry about the bundle of wires falling back down. So now that we have our four wires pulled up here behind the tail light pocket, what we're gonna do next is there's gonna be a piece of electrical tape here holding it on at this connection. We're gonna remove that and we're just gonna simply remove some of the loom because we have our three wires here. So we've already tested these for you, but the brown wire is gonna be for the tail lights, and the green wire is gonna be for the stop slash turn. So since we're over on the driver's side here, we'll be attaching the yellow wire to the green wire, the brown wire to the brown wire. We're gonna ground the white wire, and then we're gonna run the green wire along with the jumper wire for our running lights over to the other side of the vehicle. But now let's go ahead and make a couple of these connections so we can show you how. So I'm gonna make sure I give myself plenty of extra to work with. We'll clip off the excess. I'm gonna strip some of the jacket back. And then we have two terminals that come in our kit here, two size spade terminals. For these larger diameter wires, we're gonna be using the blue ones. For these smaller diameter factory wires, we're gonna be using the purple ones. So we'll just go ahead and crimp one of those on now. Now we're gonna take the stop slash turn signal wire, which is this green one. I'm gonna cut it at a good point here. I'm gonna splice on a spade terminal, the, the purple one, onto each side. Now we're gonna take one of our diodes here. So the outside is gonna to go to the bulb. Let's slide that on. One of the inside is gonna to go to the factory wire that we removed previously. And then the other one will go to the wire from our diode system, just like that. Now we're gonna repeat the same process for the brown wire, which is for the running lights. But as we said earlier, we actually need to install a jumper and run that over to the other side. So we'll splice on our two purple spade terminals and then we'll hold off for this one because we'll show you how to get the jumper wire for that. So in order to run our jumper wire from one side to the other for the running light circuit, we're gonna take the extra wire that we cut off from here. We're gonna go ahead and strip off some of the ends of it. We're gonna tie it back into the circuit just like so. And then we're gonna attach one of our blue spade terminals. Then we can go ahead and attach our last diode over here. So again, the output side goes to the bulb. And then it doesn't matter which of these goes where. 
Now what I'm going to do next is I'm going to take our green wire and our brown wire. I'm going to drop it back down in the pocket here because we're going to be running it to the other side of the vehicle. And then we have one more connection we need to make over here before we button everything up. So our white wire here remaining over on this side is going to be for a ground. So what we're going to do is I'm going to clip the XX off and then I'm going to crimp on the ring terminal that comes in our kit. We get a self tapping screw as well. Just going to splice that into a bare metal surface here behind the taillight pocket. Just like that. So now I'm going to reinstall our tail light here and then we can jump on over to the other side. So here we are on the other side of the vehicle here. We have our brown and our green wires ran over here. We're going to attach the brown wire from our diodes to the brown wire from the vehicle's wiring and then our green wire from the diodes to the green wire from the vehicle's wiring. So we're basically just repeating the same process on the other side of the vehicle here. Now that we have all our connections, we're gonna go ahead and reinstall our tail light. So now we're ready to attach our six pole connector here. So we left ourselves plenty of extra wire from before, but what we're gonna do now is we're gonna trim those down because we don't need all that. So we can just cut these all at once, shouldn't matter. And then we're actually gonna slide on the boot here. Push that back through there. And now we're gonna begin stripping each of these wires so we can attach it properly to the back of our connector. So the green wire we know that's gonna be for the right hand or the right side stop slash turn signal circuit. So we're gonna take a look at the back of our connector here and look for the RT. So the RT terminal is that one there. So we're gonna take a Phillips head screwdriver. You're gonna need a smaller one. We're just gonna back that bolt out a little bit, or the screw rather, and then we can attach it like so. You want to make sure that your wire doesn't fray like it just did there. You don't want any of the signals jumping circuits. And we'll just tighten that down to secure the wire in place. And now we'll just go ahead and repeat that for our remaining circuits. And now before we seal everything up, let's go ahead and test out our lights here to make sure everything's working correctly. We have our tail lights here. We have our left turn, our brake lights. Now let's jump over to the other side to make sure that's working as well. So here over on the passenger side, we have tail lights, brake lights, and then right turn signal. So before I secure the trailer connector to the bracket, I'm going to be taking some silicone here. I'm just going to be filling in all these connections here. That way we don't have to worry about any water getting in there. Uh, from my experience, if you don't do this, chances are water is going to get in there, corrode your terminals, and give you problems with your lights. So this is definitely a worthwhile step, something I recommend. So we'll go ahead and close that on there now. And now we'll just take some hardware to attach it to our bracket. And that's going to do it today for our look and installation of the Demco Diode Wiring Kit here on our 2015 GMC Sierra 2500.